I suffer from like really bad, like really, really, really bad OCD, like horrible. Like, like in what way? Okay, so it's like this weird, almost like not even like necessarily probably considered like a legit, it's like a, I would guess newer would be considered form. And newer in medical terms, because like the 80s is when like the first people were kind of exploring this type, it would be called like purely obsessional OCD, which is like, okay, so you think, when I say OCD, what do you think of? Washing your hands too many times, touching mm -hmm. things before you leave, like you have to touch mm -hmm. things three times. Or like straightening this, yeah. or like straightening Like that. Howard Stern style OCD. Right, like, like you're like, everything's got to be like this, yeah. or straight, or like yeah. where everything's got to be right, right? Right. So my thing is, is, is pure OCD is right, where there's these unanswered questions in your mind that t can never be answered. And the ritual is trying to find an answer. Like what kind of questions? Okay, so it could be like, let's say you are super religious, mm -hmm. right? And you love, like at your core, like your belief in God and, and Jesus and your, or any religion really right. is the centered part of your life, right? right? So one theme of it can be you have a thought. Everybody has crazy thoughts that slip through their head every day and they come and go. It's like somebody walking by you on the street, right? They walk by and they go, oh, that was weird. I just had a thought about jumping into traffic. I don't want to, and I don't even, that thought doesn't even affect me in any way. It just comes and goes. It's like a weird thought that's mm -hmm. a symptom of my brain. Right. People like me become obsessed with the meaning of those thoughts and why they entered our brain when really they don't mean anything. So like someone that really loves God and that's a core part of their being is they would go, well, what if I hate God? And that thought just, it's just a, mm. it comes and it's gone as far as it can. That thought in your brain triggers a flight or fight response. So you get this mega adrenaline dump <coughs> panic attack moment. So then that gives it mm. validity to your brain. It says, this is something we need to be concerned about. Yeah. So it starts sending that thought more and more and more. <coughs> and the obsession becomes, why did I have that thought? What does it mean? Do I really hate this thing? And it essentially attacks the things that are essentially the antithesis of the antithesis of who you actually are right so a lot of people have like uh like violent obsessions where would they they would have a thought of like stabbing somebody they don't want to stab anybody right really at the core of their being they're probably the most gentle soul in the world which is why the thought causes them anxiety and so then they become obsessed like they get on their phone and they're like why did i have this like what are the symptoms of being a psychopath or why am i like this or what did i do this like mm. and so these themes when you have them they shift over time but that period could be three four five six months at a time and then you have another thought that's different a different theme and it just switches like that and then you think back on the other one and you're like, that was so dumb. I can't believe I worried about that. Now I'm worried about what if I'm schizophrenic and I don't know. Wow. And you're obsessed with this thing. And, and I've, I, all my buddies know this about me. And I'm not afraid to talk about it or anything. But it's like I, people ask me sometimes, like my buddies would ask me, especially in high school is when it really kind of started for me. And I think they would go, well, you know, try to explain it to me. And the only way I could explain to you how truly bad it is, right, is if, like, if someone, like, murdered my whole family, I would rather them be free and live with what I had than go to jail. That's how bad it is. Whoa. And that's, like, it's not an exaggeration in any way, shape, or form. I wouldn't wish it on anybody in the entire world. So it just comes in waves and you can't control it. Yeah, pretty much. I had a friend who was, uh, he had that, and uh, he would get these thoughts that he couldn't stop, and he didn't know why, and he would have panic attacks. And uh, he's a comic, and he was uh, doing warm up for the Cosby show. Mm -hmm. You know, warm up is you're kind of like telling kind of mild jokes, and you're explaining right. the scene, and you're just right. keeping everybody engaged because the process of filming a television show is pretty. It's pretty arduous. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot going on, mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes there's downtime. And during that downtime, he would, you know, do kind of stand up for the crowd and work. Right. And he gets this thought in his head that says, don't say the N word. That would be exactly the same thing. Like, so that he, would be exactly the same. He gets this thought and it's paralyzing. 
He's <laughs> terrified he's going to say it. Right. And he can't talk. <clears throat> Right. So his his mouth is quivering. Mm -hmm. He's trying to tell his jokes, but he's not thinking at all about mm -hmm. what he's saying. So now he's bombing. Mm -hmm. So he's bombing. Yep. And the entire time, his mind is screaming at him. You're mm -hmm. gonna say it. You're gonna mm -hmm. say it. Don't Correct. say it. Don't Correct. say it. Yep. And he that, just has a yeah. fucking full on panic attack while yes. he's doing. So that would be that would be like a. I've never had that particular theme like. There is a theme of that, like people who, like your brain's like, you're about to say this thing, don't say it. Right. And then you're like, why would I think that? I don't want to say that, or I don't think that way, or I'm, that's not who I am. And like that makes your brain send it more. So it's right? like a broken circuit. It's a broken circuit for sure. And you like being afraid of it is what perpetuates it. Mm. So like the only answer to it is living with the uncertainty. Like, let's say I'm your friend in that moment. The only way you can talk yourself out of it is you go, you know what? I might say it. Really? Mm -hmm. That's how you talk yourself out? Like for I sure. might, I might jump you know in what? front of this truck? Like for sure. I'm be like, you know what? I could jump in that front of that truck if I want to. And that's how you and get I'm out okay of it? And I'm okay with it. I'm okay with that. Wow. I'm not going to, but if I wanted to, I could, and I might, and that's okay. And like, but you, it like, I can't even explain to people. It's like, because it's so weird to imagine like, having a, like if you had a thought of like i'm gonna reach across this table and just deck you one and i don't want to and i'm afraid of that but if i go you know what i could and i have to be okay with that wow like it's almost like a paradox right you're almost tricking the disorder because mm. then if you don't care about it anymore then your brain stops sending the thoughts because the thoughts are what's distressing yeah right the i like the, the thoughts coming in continually are what stresses you out because the more you have them you're thinking well that must be who i am wow. i must be this violent criminal or i must be this or i must be that or yeah. whatever whatever like, it is i must not love my wife or it's all these things that can never be answered right it's not like what's two plus two well we all know that's four these are all questions that really can, there is no answer to them at all.